Okay. Have your Bibles. Turn with me to uh, Psalm chapter 16. Psalm chapter 16. I'm going to take a drink, Barry. Just for Go you. ahead, sir. I, I wouldn't have drank it if it wasn't still last. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Pray that Mike holds you. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 16. It's good to be with you this evening. So thankful to be in the house of God more than anything. Amen. 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 Uh, thankful that I'm saved That's right. and on my way to heaven uh, because of Jesus Christ, my Lord Amen. and Savior. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'll give Him all praise and honor for all things uh, in all my life. And I'll take credit for all the uh, mess ups uh, along the way because uh, God doesn't do anything wrong, Amen. 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 And uh, you know, uh, and my middle daughter Rachel, she when she was little, she used to love to say her. She used to love to say the devil made me do it. Anytime she got in trouble, you know, she wanted to blame it on the devil, you know. Yeah. And you know, some things we probably can blame on the devil, but I found in my walk, most times I can go look in the mirror yeah. and, and I can find the problem. Uh, quicker, amen. amen. And uh, but I'm thankful that God loves me. I'm amen. thankful that God's grace is amazing, and it grows yeah. more amazing uh, every every day that I live and have to live with myself. I, I realize how amazing God's grace amen. is. Amen. amen. He's a wonderful God. And uh, and I, I just got something I wanted to uh, share with you tonight uh, before we get into the message. And I hope you don't mind. But I was thinking uh, most of you here know my wife or seen her and. And uh, sometimes I pick on her, and I really like to do that when she's not with me. Amen. So uh, I was I heard this story, and I thought this just fit my. It, it's a biblical story that just fit my household to a T. And it, it, you won't find it in scripture, but it's a story. Amen. But the story goes that uh, one day that Adam and Cain and Abel were walking out with their dad, and they walked, and they come upon the outskirts of the garden, and and uh, the angel was there with the sword, and Cain and Abel looked at Adam and said, "Dad, what's that all about?" He looked at his son and he said, Son, that's a reminder that your mama ate us out of house and home. Amen. <laughs> so, I, I heard that and I liked that and I claimed it for myself. Amen. <laughs> but really, it, and it's okay to laugh, but um, uh, the main reason we're here is to share with you the wonderful Word of God. Amen. Amen. And we want to do that. Before we read, we're going to look to the Lord in prayer and just ask His blessing upon on His Word. God will honor His Word. And uh, we're going to ask that He'll do that tonight. Father God in heaven, Lord, as we just bow before You again this night, another Lord's Day, we praise You for being God. We praise, we, we praise You, Lord, for reaching down uh, to uh, unworthy, uh, needful people that we all were. Uh, incapable, uh, Lord, of ever even reaching up to You or even knowing You without You revealing Yourself to us. And Lord, in that very most special way, when You sent Your Son not only to be us, but to pay that sin debt that we owed... And, and because of that, we can stand here not only in the pulpit and in the pews, but all around this world and proclaim to be children of God. And what a wonderful privilege and honor that is. And so we bow before You because You are the God of heaven and earth today and we worship You. And we just ask now, God, that You'd honor Your Word. You said You would, and I pray Your blessed Holy Spirit, God, just might penetrate our hearts and encourage us. Uh, Lord, that uh, something may be said tonight, Lord, that would encourage the, the Christian. Lord, that uh, maybe one that's... Uh, 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 Lord, just not where they need to be with the Lord. Maybe the one that needs encouraged, depressed, or in despair, you may touch their hearts. Maybe one here that's lost and know you not forgiveness and pardon of sin. Lord, that they may recognize, uh, God, that eternity waits them and it could be at any moment. And Lord, we just love you, we praise you, and we thank you as we ask this simple prayer in Christ's name. Amen and amen. I will make a prediction not about the Lord's coming. Uh, and, and it is in the Bible. And it said, And Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So he did make that prediction. Now I can't put a date on it, but I do know that he's coming, Amen. and he's coming quickly, Amen. and he's coming as a thief in the night when many won't be, uh, won't even be expecting his return. Amen. And I think about that as I look in the world uh, that, that around us that we live in today, and I think that quickly could be any moment, uh, and and it could it could bring us to a place to where we just throw our hands up and say, "What's the use? What's what, you know? What's the use?" It, it's uh, it seems so bad, especially if you're a Christian. Yeah. It seems so bad, and you're uh, and you're a Christian that uh, uh, that is proud of your faith and not afraid to share your faith. Amen. amen. It seems like everything just works against you. Uh, but I've got good news. Amen. amen. Uh, I would not. I, I'm the last. I'm the last preacher you ever say you will ever hear that will. Uh, 
preach you doom and gloom and then also not tell you about the good news. Amen. And because there is good news for a child of God, the story, it's not over yet. Amen. Amen. Jesus said it's finished. Listen, but it's not over yet. And the only reason that this old world's still spinning is because of the church of the living God. The bride of Christ. That's the only reason. And listen, I believe that when the, when, the, when that time comes and the last one enters in, and God knows when that will be, amen, I believe it will come to an end. That's the only reason we're here. That's the only reason this earth exists. And listen, is that God might, uh, have, that He might draw a bride out of Him of true worshipers. Listen, there's a lot of worshipers in this world, amen? amen. Not all of them worship the one, the, the living God that you and I serve tonight. And listen, I'm so thankful for that. But look with me as we read here in Psalm chapter 16. Uh, well, let's start reading in verse 8. Psalm 16, verse 8. We'll read a few verses and then we'll give you what the Lord's given us tonight. Verse 8 says, I have set the Lord always before me because He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad. And, and my rejoi and my glory rejoice. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. You may be seated. And, and what I want to get to tonight, if I can, is, is because of the fact that it seems like that our world is in such chaos. And it seems like, the, it doesn't seem like, it's fact, but it, it seemed like it used to be kind of removed from us even here, around here in West Virginia, amen? How about, let me tell you something, the chickens are coming home to roost, amen? How listen, the Bible tells us that we reap what we sow, and so many uh, think that they can sow their wild oats all week uh, and go to church on Sunday and pray for a crop failure, amen? Uh, how that don't happen because the Bible tells us uh, that we'll reap what we sow. Uh, so now that we're, we're, we wonder how, why, why it is with our children uh, uh, that, that they're growing up in a generation that, uh, uh, listen, where the world is stealing God right out from under their noses. Uh, uh, they're teaching them a, a falsity and a lie that's straight uh, from the pits of hell uh, when they teach us that we're just uh, circumstantial. Uh, that, listen, that evolution, we just uh, happen to be here. Uh, uh, my friend, uh, I defy that thought. Uh, I de it's, un it's unbiblical. It's yeah. ungodly. Uh, and my friend, it's a lie from the pits of hell. Uh, I'm not just a happenstance. Bless God. Forevermore, I'm special in the eyes of a living God and every human being is. That's right. And every child that lives and deserves to live and deserves life is special from God. Even those that we may look at and we think, well, they come out of a bad situation. Listen, it's God that gives life. Amen. And man has no right to take it. Only God does that. But it reminds us of just how special that we are to God. And if we are special to God, we've got to understand that in the midst of the chaos that we see, in the midst of all this junk that we see going around in our world, my friend, as this Scripture tells us, that God has a plan for our lives. And He has a plan for the church. And we know what the end result for the church is. But we don't always know what lays in front of us as we travel that road toward seeing our Savior. Amen. And uh, I don't know what uh, I, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow, Amen. Uh, and I know if I'm a child of God, uh, and that God it says that He works all things uh, for the good of them that love Him, uh, and that are called according to His purpose. Uh, bless God forevermore. Uh, and that tells me uh, that if I'm about the Father's business, uh, it may not always be a bed of roses on Monday. Uh, it may be death on Friday. Uh, but praise God, sunshine's coming on Sunday. Uh, come to the Lord. Uh, And I could do, we could do, I, and I get that way, and I find my way, get, I find myself getting that way many times as I see the destruction of, of people's lives. Many times those that are, very, I don't know who they are, but many times there are folks that are very dear to me, or that I know personally. And I see a life and I think uh, how that life has been wasted uh, and how the world has laid waste uh, to another life. Uh, uh, bless God forevermore. Uh, so it would be easy to get down. Uh, but this Scripture here in verse 11, it says, uh, He says, uh, Thou wilt show me the path of life. You know, the, uh, the wonderful thing about it is uh, uh, that's why that uh, we've been taught evolution is to teach uh, that there's no value in life whatsoever. That we're no better. I'm no better than that cricket out there. Uh, I'm no better than that tadpole out there. Bless God Forevermore, you're a lot better than that. You're a lot better than that, than that, than that uh, tadpole or whatever. May I say to you today, uh, you can go out and kick a dog and go to jail, uh, and you can you can kill a child. Amen. 
That's right. Yes. Amen. You're right. That's exactly right. 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 Yes. Amen. And be off the hook. Yeah. Amen. Right. That's They'll right. hunt you down. Yes, sir. For cock fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Listen, I'm not advocating anything. I'm just telling you how upside down Amen. this world is. Amen. Amen. Now, listen, Amen. Uh, there's nobody uh, more blessed uh, and more loved uh, than those who were created in God's image. Yeah. Everything else was created good. Uh, yeah. I mean, only God uh, is created in the very, only man created in the very image uh, and likeness of Almighty yeah. God. Yeah. And we are special. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. You say, preacher, you think a lot of yourself. Then, no, I don't think a lot of myself, but God does. God thinks a lot of me and He thinks a lot of you. And so when I think about the chaos and what's going on and we recognize that, listen, that, 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 that is sin. That, that is what was that, that man brought upon himself. Now we can, bring, we can blame Father Adam if we want to. You know, he, Adam and Eve, our mother and father, our carnal mothers and fathers brought sin, introduced sin into the world. Amen. They chose it. Yeah. But listen, you know, I'm convinced that we choose it sometimes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If not in deed, often in thought. Yeah. We do. But God loves us. You know, I love the 103rd Psalm. He says, where He says, I remember their frame. Yeah. I remember their dust. Yeah. But yet He still says that He has compassion. Yes, he He's long-suffering. Yeah. Aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful? Listen, I love this book of the Bible. Well, I haven't even got the message yet. Amen. I may need another bottle of water. Amen. And I'll tell you, I love uh, as I read uh, uh, all 66 books and I understand uh, that the, new, the Old Testament is just as relevant as the New. Uh, I just get to the Old Testament uh, uh, that made me a sinner. Amen. Uh, hey, listen, and under the law, uh, there were things you could be stoned to death at the moment. Uh, even I'll tell you, uh, even in the Old Testament, we find instances like Korah. Uh, uh, listen, where the ground opened up and they swallowed them up, uh, or where that God would strike them dead. You say that's harsh. Uh, my friend, that's what you deserve. And that's what I deserve. But thank God for Jesus. And His amazing grace. God has a plan. God knew that we would need a Savior. And here He tells us, He said, I'll show you the plan. He said, I'll show you the path of life. The Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. Order. You ever heard that word before? You know, the Bible says that in Genesis, in the very creation of the world, and it, here's, here's what we need to understand. That God is not a God of chaos. Amen. God is a God of order. Amen. Amen. We see it in creation. We see it all about us. And we, we see that, you know, that Mary's talking about that global warming. Matter of fact, October of last year, the, the last glacier was supposed to melt, if you believe, out of order. But anyway, they're still there. We spoke in New York, Manhattan's supposed to be under, uh, Long Island's supposed to be underwater right yeah, now. Right? Right. Yeah. But anyway, we'll get off of that. Amen. I, I've known he's a got enough job for a long time. Yeah. Amen. And I'm not even that smart. <laughs> now listen, we see that, that uh, and our Bible tells us, you know, uh, uh, and so many times that the creation, uh, uh, you know, the Bible even says uh, uh, that the donkey knows his master, but my people don't even know me. And, you know, and we see that the very sun that we see, uh, that is a testimony of Almighty God. Uh, and we get up, uh, and you know my friend, it comes up every single day. Yeah. And you know how big it, that it is? Uh, how when God created the sun and the moon, uh, He said it in order. He taught it what to do every single day. Uh, the Joshua song day, uh, it has done the same thing. Yeah. And it will continue to do so. Amen. No matter what man does, it will continue to do so. Amen. There's order. There's beautiful structure. Yeah. You even think about a human being. Now, as I hold my hand up, and you look into my eyes, of all the people who have been born in this world, Brother Bill, there's not one human being has my hand. Amen. 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 Amen.
said, thank you, Lord. But those snowflakes, you know, not one single snowflake is the same. That's right. Amen. Amen. Tell me God don't know what Amen. And when He done this and He made this, uh, what I'm saying is God is a God of order. Uh, and He said, I will show you the path of life. Uh, in, in Revelation chapter 1, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Listen, God didn't leave us in the dark. Uh, he didn't save us uh, and didn't say, okay, here's the path. You find your way home. Uh, bless God forevermore. Uh, he not only saved us, uh, but He keeps us. Uh, and He gives us His Holy Spirit. Uh, God, and He has placed His special seal of approval. I can look at many people and I, and I think, my God, what have you ever seen that person? Have you ever seen anybody like that? Oh, yeah. He smiles when he looks at yeah. yeah. But God does. Yeah. Yes. Amen. The most vile, silly so sing a song from the vilest of sinners. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that God loves. You know, God loves the sinner. Yeah. Romans 5, he says, God committed his love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Not when I was good, when I was bad. Amen. If I were good, he didn't need to die. Amen. He died for me in all of my vile sin. Amen. That's how much. Don't tell me you're not special. Don't tell me that you're an accident. Don't tell me uh, that this whole thing is a circumstance uh, because the devil does that uh, and to get you to see no value uh, in it here and now. Amen. My friends, as long as we're here, uh, uh, people can be saved uh, and there's value. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 And there's a path to be gone, and there's a path that water structure, and God's revealed it to us. Yeah, there's so many things that the Apostle Paul said. He said, Now to us, I see through a glass darkly, but then face to face we'll know, even as we're not. Yeah. We do see things they have failed to a sense right now through a glass darkly. Look here. Remember, even John said that at the end of this gospel, he said, I suppose of all the things were written about uh, what Jesus had done, the whole world could contain the books. Uh, uh -huh. so, uh, we don't know everything here now, uh, my friend, but I believe we know everything. Everything, everything that God wanted us to know, and He's revealed it to us. Hey, 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 you know, some people say they're ignorant of the facts. If you're ignorant of the facts of the Word of God, you choose to be ignorant. Yeah. 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 You say, well, I just can't read. I don't care if you can read. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I really don't. And there are folks that, and now listen, hear me out. Man is not your teacher. Come on. And this yeah. book is not going to pull off a library shelf. Yeah. Right. 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 This is the all inspired, oh, yeah. God breathed yeah. Word. Yeah. Yeah. And it has super, the Bible says, will be gotten by the Word. Yeah. Yeah. It is life giving power. Yeah. You can read yeah. this book and you think you don't even understand a word you're reading. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that's why so many are taking this King James and set it over to the side. And listen, they're losing the power of the Word of God. Yeah. 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 Because it's this Word, even when you know not what's happening, it's the Spirit that quickeneth you. Yeah. I once yeah. was yeah. in sin. Hey, listen, but I'm not in sin anymore. Yeah. I've been quickened by the Spirit yeah. of God. Yeah. And the Spirit of God yeah. will move upon this word. Yeah. Right. And I encourage people to feed on it. Oh, yeah. Even yeah. when they think, even when there's unconscious growth in the word of God. You know that? Many times you, you, you can you can feed and then I feed sometimes I graze. Amen. Bless yeah. God forevermore. Yeah. I feed the physical body very well. Yeah. But it's the spiritual body yeah. that's revealed to us. It will reveal the path of life. Amen. Thy word. Is a lamp unto my feet yeah. and a light unto my path. You yeah. see what that says? It's a lamp. It tells me where I am yeah. and it tells me where I'm going. Oh, yeah. 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 God shines a light on the path that we have yeah. because we are special to Him. Yeah. We are the we are the crown jewel of His creation. I know I, I I'm a lot like David many times, and as I get older and I step in front of that mirror in the morning, I begin to work on myself. Amen. Amen. I know it myself now. I know why we don't wear makeup. I, I'm thinking about a toupee. What do you think? <laughs> huh? oh, maybe a toupee. Well, yeah, and, 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 and I'll tell you, some people need a little deodorant. They make it. They make it. A little perfume. Well, that would shake me. Some, you know, I don't think you ought to dunk yourself in, but some people know it's okay. Go ahead and put a little bit of that. Amen. 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 Why is it? Why? Because we're dying. Yeah, yeah. We're decaying right in our shoes. Yeah, right. And I look at that and I look at myself in the mirror and I think, I'm like David and I'm saying, Oh, what is man that God is mindful of me? Yeah, right. 
I think I repeat the words of the Apostle Paul when he says, Oh, wretched man that I am. Amen. And yet God reminds me every day, I die. If I sin, I sin. I die. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I love you. The Bible says, Even yeah. to the hoary hairs, mm -hmm. it ought to be with you. Amen. 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 Isn't that wonderful to know that he doesn't just put you on the path? Say, find your way. Amen. He's revealed it to us in His Word. And that, that is the key to the path. You know, so many times uh, the path goes astray because we stray off the path. You say, well, preacher, everybody doesn't know the Word. Well, you know, they're without excuse too. We can read over in Romans chapter 1. It says this, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Yep. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath not showed, hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world, listen, are clearly seen. If you can't see God in this Word, you don't want to see God. You close, you've got a hard heart and a stiff neck and a, and a blind eye and a deaf ear. If you can't walk out these doors, you can't look out these windows and see God. Amen. And it says, being understood by the things that are made. The world. Even His eternal power and Godhead. And the verse says, so that they are without excuse. There's no excuse for not serving God. There is no excuse to not believe in God. Amen. And here we would call this general revelation. That is something that anybody can see. That's what it says without excuse. Every man, woman, or child, you can look into the eyes of your mama, in the eyes of your papa, in the eyes of your child. And my friend, this means God is real. God is real. God is real. Amen. And everybody has it. Amen. Yes, sir. If they never heard the word Jesus spoke, they have the general revelation Amen. of God. Amen. And virtually every culture that actually believes has a God. They may. Yes, sir. But God went further for those that He would show the path. In Hebrews chapter 1, He said, God in sundry times and divers manners spoke to the prophets. He said, But in these days, he has spoken by His Son. Yeah. Yeah. He said, God, I'm going to step further for those that would believe, for those that have hearts that would receive and have eyes that would see and have ears that would hear. But how do you know that? The Bible says, Seek, and you shall find. Yeah. Amen. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Listen, if we will seek God with our whole heart, we will find Him. I, you know, I even like how the apostle said that you never know what He said. He is not very far from you. Because he's everywhere and he's in everything. And listen, he's there and we find him in the Word of God and he will reveal himself to us not only in the general sense that everybody can see, but in a personal way. Amen. God spoke to me one night, convinced me, the Holy Spirit convinced me of my need. He convinced me that I was a sinner. Amen. Yeah. And that I was lost. Yeah. And I deserved. I deserved lightning to strike me. I've had people tell me that over the years. Preacher, I'm not going to come in that church. Lightning might strike me. I said, you're more likely to get hit the lightning out there than you are in here. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Listen, if that's the way God dealt with us, dealt with us, the moment we become of the age of accountability, it would probably it probably took every one of us less than an hour commit our first actual sin. Mm -hmm. And God could have struck us dead and we would have deserved it. Right. Yeah. You say, preacher, who are you to judge me? I'm not judging you. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Aren't you glad of that tonight? Amen. Thank Amen. God for the amazing Amen. grace. So, listen, in this plan that God has for us, it's a plan that leads to life. I once was in... Dead in my sins, but right. now I've been found. Amen. It, it, it leads to abundant life. Listen, we as Christians, even in the midst of a dark world that we live in, listen, don't let the devil steal your joy. And don't let the devil steal your testimony. Don't let him steal the light. We still are supposed to be that city, that light, uh, that city upon a hill. Uh, and we're still supposed to light our candle. Uh, and listen, and let the world see it. We are still the light of the world. Amen. <laughs> and you know, the darker it gets, 
the brighter you shine. Not that you shine any brighter, but the more the, the, the darkness comes, the brighter that the light looks. And listen, that's what people need in this world today. I don't know how many will be saved. I really don't. I, it breaks my heart a lot of times when we do revivals and, and altar calls and, and it seems harder and harder and harder oh. to get people to make a decision when their eternal soul weighs in the balance. Yes, and they're, they're, they're trading out their, you know, they're trading their, their uh, eternity for the pleasures of this world for a season. But my friend, it is for a season. Amen. Seasons come and go. Amen. Yeah. And one day, one day, the Bible says God winked His eye. But listen, one day the Lord's coming back. And listen, when He does, I believe He's coming with judgment in His hand. And listen, it will only count whether or not you faithfully serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be like Timothy. I'm not perfect. But I can say I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Amen. Therefore, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord Himself shall give me at that day. And not only me, but all those that love His appearing. Amen. Listen, the Bible says that when the Lord appears, there will be many that will climb into the rocks. They will hide and they will even pray that the rocks would fall on them and kill them and they won't be able to die. Listen, that's not loving His appearing. Hey, hey, listen, uh, He says, I will come quickly. John said at the end of that book, uh, He said, even so, Lord, come quickly. Uh, and John was ready. Uh, even those disciples that watched Him ascend 40 days after the resurrection uh, and that angel said, ye men of Galilee, why are you standing up here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus you see caught up will so come again in like manner. Amen. You know why they were standing there? They were looking for Him to return. Yeah. Amen. I believe that. They saw Him go up and He had told them. Now see, they would already missed the re- at what He had told them about the resurrection. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But I'll tell you, after, he, after, he, after they opened the tomb up and, and the Lord let them in to see that He wasn't there, I believe they started out, they began to believe. Yeah. Literally, what he said, and that's what we need to do, church. We need to believe literally what the Bible says. I don't see any other. I don't see any reason not to. Do you? Who are you going to believe? Listen, the Bible it says, "Let, let God be true; let all men be liars." Amen. And we know that Satan is a liar and the father of lies. In the second part of this verse, he says, uh, in um, Psalm there, the verse I read you. Verse 11, he says, Thou will show me the path of life. He'll reveal it to you through His Word, by His Spirit. In thy presence is fullness of joy. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed when you get into a, just when you just get into the Holy Ghost, amen? Oh, yes. I thought about the brother talking about his healing. And I and I thought about the times that I felt him physically in the body exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. And even and I've always wanted to go to church, but if I'm going to be honest to you, there were there have been plenty of times literally that in body I really didn't feel like yeah, that. You're right. Amen. Amen. And then I get to the house of God yeah. and God honors His Word. And listen, you get into the presence of the yeah. Holy Spirit. Now the Spirit's with me all the time. Now listen, but there's something about being in the Lord's house and the Lord's yeah. house. Yeah. 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 Even though you're a dead man, the Lord can touch you and raise you up. It's like yeah. God. Yeah. And you can be in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Yeah. And listen, it just seems like everything else doesn't uh, yeah. matter anymore. It doesn't matter what happened out there. Yeah. You forget about what happened coming to church. Uh, yeah. And you just focus uh, because the presence of God yeah. is so yeah. You know how you know what steals your joy? Sin. When David sinned, you know what? He confessed his sin and then he said, Restore unto me the joy. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Listen, I'll tell you what. You can play around in sin as a Christian. Don't tell me you can't. I know plenty of the devil. Amen. But listen, I'll tell you what. You better be careful. Amen. You better be careful because the first thing he'll do is steal your joy. Amen. And the next thing he'll do is steal your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, there is no joy. Hey, there is joy in serving God. And listen, the Holy Spirit is the source of that joy. I love being in the fountain, don't you? Amen. Bless God forevermore. As somebody said that they got that God turned the spigot off. Listen, that's okay. I'm gonna disagree just a little bit. My friend, God, don't turn the spigot off. My friend, you might get under the spout, but listen, God wants to bless you, He wants to bless you every day. Amen. In every moment of every day. See, there's joy to a child of God that has nothing to do with chaos that's going on around you. 
See, that's happiness. Yeah. World can still be happiness. I'm not going to tell you all it's going to be happy. If you did, if I was that kind of preacher, I'd have all three played out here. Amen. Amen. And I'd tell you it's going to be a millionaire by the end of the week. Yeah. Just give me a little bit. Amen. 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 I love the joy from giving, Brother Jay. Just meet me at the church. Amen. Amen. Bless God. Just give me all you want. God will bless you real good. Amen. Amen. Huh? That's not how it works. Yes. See, I, 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 I take no joy. You know why I have joy? And I have joy in, in, in the presence of God and, and, and in the presence of His people. Amen. That brings me peace Amen. and that brings Amen. me joy and that brings me strength. Amen. But sin will separate from you and your God. Amen. 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 It drives a wedge between you and God that will steal your joy and ultimately will take you down. Amen. Amen. And don't you think for a minute. Listen, I, I, I can't think this way. Maybe, you know, everybody doesn't agree with me. If you're here, you're lost. That ain't going to mess with you too much. Amen. Amen. He might be prospering. Yeah. Matter of fact, the devil used prosperity a lot over the years. Yes, he will. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Bible says it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That don't mean there won't be any, but it tells me it's all hard. It's it's hard. hard. Yeah. Why? Because it's the love of the things of this yeah. world. And that's what it, that's what it brings on you that, that trumps the love of God. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, I'll take anything God wants to give me. Praise God, won't you? Amen. 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 If God won't make me a millionaire, my goodness, I will. Amen. 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 I'll, I'll praise you for it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I'm, if I feel that way, I've also got to be like to it. And I've got to be able to say, God, give it. Oh, yeah. And God, take it. Amen. Amen. And no matter what he puts on me, he's still God. I'm still going to worship him. He's not going to take my joy. He might take my happiness. Yeah. Yes. God, the world might take my happiness, but it cannot take your joy. Amen. The only thing that rob you of your joy is sin yeah. in your life. Sure. Amen. 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 And we do like David, and we say, and we admit it, and we go on and, and ask him to wash us and to forgive us for our transgression, and the Bible promises us that he's just and he's faithful, yeah. not only to forgive, but to cleanse. Yeah. Now that's important. You know why that's important? Because not only does He forgive, if I just forgive you of something, it may, it may still be on your account. Amen. Mm -hmm. But there's still going to be a mark there. Mm -hmm. But when God forgives you, He cleanses. Yeah. yeah. Right. Amen. What's that mean? He kind of just like I've never seen. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Listen, I'm so thankful that we have a, not only a plan, but we have His presence. And matter of fact, the Bible said that the Holy Spirit is a seal to redeem us until the day of redemption. It is God's seal of approval on us. Yes. And there's joy in that. Amen. I like what David wrote in Psalm 23. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear no evil. Why? Because thou <coughs> Listen, folks, death is a reality. Amen. Yes, sir. Death is a reality. Sin entered the world and it brought death. That's the penalty for sin. It's inevitable. Unless we go by way of the rapture. Amen. Death's going to get you. Mm -hmm. And death's no respecter of age. Right. I've heard Buck say many times he's going to live to 100 or die trying. I'll tell you, he's, he's getting... He's a man of his word. Amen? Amen. How old are you now, Buck? Nope. How old are you? 94. 94? Mm -hmm. Live to 100 or die trying. But you know, you may go out of this world two years old. Yep. You may leave this world at ten. You may leave this world at twelve. Yep. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, neither one of us ever how we old. We have no promise of tomorrow. Amen. I come quickly. And you know what that means? That means you need to be prepared. Yes. You need Amen. to be ready. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Verse 6 says, Surely goodness, this is the presence, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So what's going to follow you? Goodness and mercy. Listen, that's God's plan for us and it's His blessing on us. You can see God's presence along the way and it makes this journey in this world worthwhile. Listen, you take God out of the equation. <laughs> Apostle Paul said, uh, uh, he said, I would uh, be of all men most miserable. Amen. What a, what a wretched blight this would be if there were no reality of heaven. I told a guy one time, he was struggling, he, he was saved but he was really struggling, him and his wife. They had, and I didn't know the guy, I met him at work down in Greenbrier County. They had gotten in their car and backed over their uh, daughter, yeah. toddler, and killed her. 
didn't see her, you know, backed out of the driveway and ran over their own daughter and killed her, and they were devastated. You can imagine that. And they were questioning God. And I can understand that. And I told him, I, there's nothing you can, you can say to somebody like that that's going to really make them feel any better. Amen. Other than to tell them, you know, you can see that child again. You can see your child. That child's in heaven. And giving up on God now is the only thing that will hinder you from seeing your child again. And I said, you can live this world. And I said, and, and, and then I went on to say this. And I think they'd been out of church for a little while. It'd been several years. And I said, I, I said, well, it's like this. I said, if you're not going, if you don't believe that there's an eternity out there, there's a heaven and a hell. And I'll say this to you. If you don't believe that, I suggest you go out this door and live it up. I do. I wouldn't hold nothing. I'd be like Solomon. I would go out and I would take everything, anything I could in this world. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying because if, if this is all you got, That's right. you better live it up now. Right. But listen, there's so much more. Amen. There's so much more. His presence affords us rest. In Exodus, as the children of Israel were leaving, He would give them these words, My presence shall go with me and I'll give thee rest. Even as they wandered for 40 years, God's presence never left. How do you know that? Because He had a pillar of cloud by day. Amen. And a pillar of fire by night. God's presence never left them. But you know what? They moved when He moved. And they stopped when He stopped. Amen. And that's what we need to do. That's how we'll get rest. He told them as they were beginning, as they were going to the promised land, He said, When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and people, be more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee. We know that He is presence. He's with us. Even, in this, even as we are on our way to the promised land. Even to the smallest assembly. Say, well, how many does it take? I love Matthew says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name. What's he say? I am in the midst. It's not in the crowd. Amen. It's okay to have a crowd. It's okay to have a big church. Yeah. But listen, if the, if the Lord ain't there, it's not a church. Amen. 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 And, and you're not having church. Amen. Right. Amen. If the Spirit's not there, it's just a gathering. Yeah. Yeah. How long will we go with you? Matthew 28, 20 says, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. See, so He puts you on this path, reveals it to you, gives you His presence to go with you yeah. through the valley of the shadow of death all the way to the end. And even when it gets down, sometimes it seems like you have a lot of friends and you have a, a, a lot of company and a lot of big crowd, you know, a circle of friends, but the Bible tells us where there's just two yeah. or three. I like to think I can do that myself. It's me, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. That's four right there. I can have church all by myself. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, let's look at the last part of that verse. Not only... Is there the path of life and the fullness of joy? It says at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Pleasures forevermore. Jeremiah 29 11 is one of my favorite verses. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And what that means, what that literally is saying is, is that I have plans for you. <coughs> That's why he said he, he said had to give you an expected end. You know what that means? That means it's guaranteed. Now, how's it guaranteed? It's guaranteed if we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. See, and, I, and I'm kind of greedy sometimes when it comes to the things of God. Somebody said, "Well, just give me a cabin over in Goy." My Bible says a mansion. Amen. Now they'll tell me what well, means dwelling place. That's okay. Hey, you want to dwell in a molehill? You go right ahead. I like mansions. <laughs> I do, amen. amen. And I like one that's not going to decay. Right. That I'm not going to have a word on. Amen. Yeah. You move into a home and, 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 and it's brand new, and then a few years later it's not new anymore. Yeah. And you're working on it, you're fixing it. But mm -hmm. well, my Bible says, I'm at you. Jesus amen. said, I go away and prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, I'll come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you go to go. He said to my father, let, let not your heart be troubled. In my father's house are many mansions. And it does mean go to the place. I know that. But I'll tell you what. I cannot imagine if they're going to pay the road with gold. Yes, sir. Hey, what we walk 
wrong. And drive them. Yeah. Burn the rubber wrong. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. Praise God. That's what the streets are going to be made yeah. of. And there's nothing there that will defy or decay. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be good. Yeah. It is going to be something else. Yeah. It, it, matter of fact, it is now. Let me, let me back up. It is something yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. It's being prepared now. He will what is as a bride prepared yeah. for his or as a groom to prepare for the bride. And he's coming back for us. Mm -hmm. And it says there's pleasures forevermore. He said in Jeremiah 29 11, he says, I know the thoughts that I have for you. Isn't it wonderful to know that even now that God, the God of heaven, is thinking about your well being. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. And it's especially exciting if we go back to how I started this message, the shape this world's in. There's a scripture in the Bible that says God will laugh at him. And I've often, I always did like to get the last laugh, amen. And it's sad because people are going to die lost yeah. and go and end up in a devil's hell for eternity. Right. And you know, there'll be no remembrance of them. Yeah, that's right. They'll be separated from God yeah. for throughout eternity. And let me say this, in torment. Yeah. Yeah. In torment. So I ask you this, how would you have it? When God has clearly shown you, you have no excuse. Yeah. There's no excuse for not accepting the Lord. Right. He doesn't require anything of you. Yeah. Somebody says, well, I've got to do this. No, you don't. You don't have to do nothing. You try to fix it and you'll mess it up worse yeah, than right. what it is now. But you bring it all to God. Yeah. You bring it to the altar and you give it to Him. Amen. And God will forgive you of it. Amen. Amen. He said, old things are passed away. Behold, yeah. all things are become new. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And from that point on, you won't be perfect. Amen. You won't be perfect. Amen. But I'll tell you what, you will change your walk. Yeah. Amen. There's nobody ever met the you show me a person in the Bible who met the Lord and didn't leave a different way. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You should, you'd have to show it to me for me to see it. Amen. Amen. You meet the Lord, you say, Well, it's because you can't understand it until I can because I can speak to your ears. The best of preachers that you've ever heard can only penetrate your ears. Yeah. But the Spirit of God pierces in the word, pierces straight to the heart. Amen. And if you're here tonight and either you know Him not forgiveness and pardon of sin or maybe you're backslidden in heart, not where you need to be with the Lord, that's a path that you've chosen to go. But the path back to God is right down this altar, right down this aisle for this altar. Amen. We stand together tonight and we get a song for an invitation. God does have a plan for your life. Matter of fact, as I said earlier, the fact that you're here, the fact that this world's still turning is a testament to that. Yeah.